Hey everyone, my name is Leah Stevens and I'm a classically trained flutist and teacher here in Pittsburgh. I've been playing flute for about 15 years and I just received my master in music from Carnegie Mellon University. I love all things contemporary, electronic, crazy and weird. And today I'm going to be bringing to you the first part of my course, Sound and the World Around Us. And as I said that, you may have heard a car just drive by. You may also hear some chirping of birds and I'm, as I come to you here from my living room, but that's okay because that's kind of what this class is about. In this three-part video series, it's my goal to help you think more actively and more creatively about the environment you live in, the world around us. Sound is such an important indicator of what's going on in our daily lives, but it's something we usually don't really think about. It's usually passive. We don't think about all the tiny sounds that inform us of what's going on. So how exactly are we going to think more creatively and actively about our environment? Well, part one today is called Deep Listening, in which we'll talk about the sounds of our everyday lives. Part two is called Environmental Activism in Music, in which we'll explore some composers in their music and the environmental activism behind their music. In part three, we'll kind of build on the ideas of these first two classes, and that's called world building, in which we'll be imagining and creating our own worlds based on music that we'll listen to. Should be a bunch of fun. So for today, if you have headphones or earbuds, um, that'd be really helpful to use. So if you wanna pause and go grab that. If you don't have that, no problem. You'll be able to enjoy the class just the same. All right, so if you're ready, Let's get started with part one, deep listening. Now, some of these concepts may be new for you, maybe even a little strange, and that is completely okay. All I ask is that you come curious, and if nothing else, hopefully this can serve as a kind of meditative time for you, away from all the craziness of the pandemic, for you to just hang out, have some time for reflection, and to connect with your world in a positive way. Okay, so first thing, what is deep listening? What does that mean? Here's a definition I have. Deep listening is a way of listening in every possible way to everything possible to hear no matter what you are doing. Now, that's a pretty monumental task to listen to absolutely everything all the time. But basically what this is getting at is a heightened awareness of listening. So rather than our kind of day-to-day -day passive hearing, kind of in one ear, out the other, it's actively listening to what's going on around us. And this idea was pioneered by Pauline Oliveros. Pauline Oliveros was an accordionist, composer, activist, avant-garde artist, and a pioneer leading the way in how we listen to sound and music. She was in her 30s at the height of the Vietnam War, and her private experimental work served as a response to this. Her text-based scores, sonic meditations, served as what she described as recipes to explore sounds experienced as an individual and later within her woman's group. They were a way to turn inward amidst political chaos, serving as a quiet but radical act of feminism and activism. In 1988, she coined the term deep listening, both a descriptor and a pun for when her band, the Deep Listening Band, descended into the ground through a manhole into a massive cistern in Washington state. This is an enormous underground space which once held 2 million gallons of water and has a 45 second reverberation time. It looks like this. The group improvised in this space without a plan, consciously listening to and responding to their own sounds and each other's sounds throughout the space. In this way, the cistern acts as an instrument itself maneuvering the sounds. Here's a picture of Pauline Oliveros with her accordion in the cistern. Take note of how large this space is, has high ceilings, 
it seems almost boundless and try to imagine how sound may move through this space. It probably won't sound like your room or classroom or the outdoors. It's a unique experience to play in a space like this. Now I'm going to play for you an excerpt from the album Deep Listening recorded by Pauline Alveros and her Deep Listening Band. Now keep in mind that this was unplanned. It was completely improvisational and in the moment as they responded to each other's sounds within this massive cistern. Feel free to close your eyes and imagine the sound, visualize it. Does it take a shape? Does it have a color? Does it have a feeling? Quite strange and otherworldly sounds, right? Oliveris' use of deep listening manifested itself in so many ways. She even founded the Center for Deep Listening so that others may also explore these concepts. Before we dive into some listening activities, I want to read this quote from the Center for Deep Listening website. Deep listening, as developed by Oliveros, explores the difference between the involuntary nature of hearing and the voluntary selective nature of listening. The practice includes body work, sonic meditations, interactive performance, listening to the sounds of daily life, nature, one's own thoughts, imagination, and dreams. It cultivates a heightened awareness of the sonic environment, both external and internal, and promotes experimentation, improvisation, collaboration, playfulness, and other creative skills vital to personal and community growth. Okay, now that's a lot to digest, but let's strip it down by exploring sounds of Pittsburgh, sounds that we are familiar with. For this listening activity, I'm going to play for you four audio clips from completely different environments. I want you to listen to these and try to create for yourself a mental map of these sounds. Think about what sounds you notice. Are the sounds loud or soft? Are they man-made or nature-made? Perhaps a mix. Are the sounds clear or unclear, near or far? Are the sounds occurring indoors or outdoors? Is it a large space or a small space? You can even consider questions such as, does this sound only happen a certain time of day, a certain time of year, around a certain holiday, around a certain activity? There are a countless number of things that we can ask ourselves as we listen. I'll play about 30 seconds of each clip and after listening, the matching video will be revealed. 
Now this isn't really a right or wrong game. The main point is to just see how deeply we can listen and visualize sounds. So even if you don't guess the exact thing, that's no problem. Okay, so if you're ready, let's get started with listening example number one. All right, so that of course was a clip of fans going absolutely bananas as the Pittsburgh Penguins won their second straight Stanley Cup in 2017. Now, what did we learn from that clip? Okay, first, there's a ton of people. By listening, we could hear hundreds, maybe thousands of people going wild. We hear their cheers reverberating around what seems to be a large space, which we learn is PBG Paints Arena. So we can tell that this is an indoor event, and we can also tell that it's a celebratory event, that this is an exciting, uh, happy experience. Well, if you're a Penguins fan. But it's interesting to think about how sound can tell us all this information before we even see what's going on. So with that in mind, let's take a listen to listening excerpt number two, something completely different. So that was a waterfall in Ohio pile, much different from our first clip of cheering Penguins fans. Now notice how the sound places us somewhere geographically. You probably noticed while listening that there weren't any voices, that really the only sound was this rushing water, and we could visualize it. It's not a trickle of a stream. It's also not Niagara Falls, but somewhere kind of in the middle, right? As you listened, did you identify a feeling with the waterfall? Maybe it caused a sense of peace and calmness, like a white noise machine, or maybe it gave you anxiety and panic. We can experience sounds in different ways from each other, even if we're hearing the same thing. So with that in mind, let's take a listen to example number three. So that was the Steel Curtain roller coaster at Kennywood Park. Now in this excerpt, we heard some voices, right? Some screams, some cheers. 
there's that guy who said, here we go. <laughs> but it wasn't quite the same as the first listening excerpt where the sounds were contained and we got a sense of that reverberation. So that was a cue for us that this is something outside, something far more expansive than even a stadium as this roller coaster rumbles around and kind of dominates the area. Now let's dive into our final listening example, listening example number four. And you're gonna have to listen very closely to this one. It's very subtle. In that final listening example, we saw someone kayaking down the Allegheny River. The sound was very subtle, the tiny patters of water as the paddle hit the water. And I really like this one because it's an interesting symbiotic relationship between human and nature, where it's a human producing this nature sound, which is kind of interesting to think about. So in that last exercise, I was giving you audio clips to listen to, to practice visualizing sound, imagining where it's coming from and where it exists. In this next exercise, I'm gonna do something a little different and take the same clips you just heard and saw and mix them up. Sound is such an important indicator of telling us where we are. And that seems pretty obvious, but even sounds we don't really listen to and don't really actively pay attention to, as soon as they are displaced, it becomes very obvious very quickly that something is up. Let me show you what I mean. That one makes me laugh, honestly. So that was our little kayaker friend sound overlaid the Pittsburgh Penguins winning the Stanley Cup. So this extremely exciting scene becomes very anticlimactic when we don't have the cheering, the air horn, the countdown, right? Let's check out the next one. Okay, so those were our Pittsburgh Penguins fans cheering on a waterfall. See how important sound is? Even sounds that we may not normally think of actively become so important in a situation when the sounds are switched. Did that experience give you a certain feeling? Maybe it seemed ridiculous or funny, disorienting. It made me feel kind of uncomfortable listening to the craziness and loud sounds of city life intruding on this beautiful nature scene. Okay, let's check out the next one.
how did your experience of that Kennywood roller coaster change when I added in the waterfall sound? Did it feel different? Seem different? For me, a few seconds in, I began to interpret that waterfall sound as wind because I think the brain tries to make sense of this displaced sound and visual experience. Let's check out the last clip. clip was of course our kayak scene with the audio of the roller coaster. How was that experience for you? For me, I was thinking, where are all the other kayakers? Where are these voices coming from? And wow, this sounds like some powerful motorized kayak or something. And although this exercise is a little silly and ridiculous, it really drives home the point that sound is so vital to how we experience the world around us. It is so deeply connected to feelings, to memories. And when what we're seeing doesn't match what we're hearing, our relationship with the world around us is completely destabilized and disoriented. For this final part today, I'm going to be leading you through a guided deep listening exercise. So if you have your earbuds in, uh, remove those, unplug those, and just listen to the sound of my voice, the sounds around your space. You can close your eyes if you want and just relax. This guided deep listening will last for about five minutes. It may feel like a long time, but trust me, you can do it. This is a great way to exercise your visualization, your imagination, and your awareness skills. So like we practiced in the first exercise today, I want you to try making a mental map of the sounds around you, visualizing where the sound is coming from, and maybe even connecting feelings and memories to certain sounds. Or if you'd like, you could connect shapes and colors to certain sounds. Start by noticing my voice, the way it moves up and down. My voice will be the constant through all of this, but you'll learn how to listen to other sounds besides my voice. Notice your breath, taking long inhales and exhales. Noticing the sounds from your own body. Imagine a circle radiating out from your body. Five feet in front of you. Five feet behind you. Five feet to each side. What sounds do you notice within the circle? Maybe you notice the bells happening on my end. Do you notice the sounds of electronics? The hum of a refrigerator? The creaking of the floor? Let that five foot radius around you expand, encompassing your home. What do you notice in other rooms or down the hall? How many people can you hear within this space? What are they doing? Notice the sound of your breath again, my voice. Notice how you can adjust the range of your hearing, like flipping through pages of a book.
you're more than halfway done. Stick with it. Take your awareness outside. What's the most present sound? Can you hear other sounds from my recording? Are there vehicles outside? Can you count them? Do you hear voices? Animals? Sounds from nature? Man-made sounds? Can you hear machinery? Maybe the rustle of trees? The tick of a crosswalk? Perhaps the sound of water? Are the sounds you're hearing having a conversation with each other? Let yourself become aware of your entire soundscape. Notice your place in the center of this soundscape. Come back to the sound of my voice, the sound of your breath, and you've finished your first guided deep listening. All right, if your eyes were closed, feel free to open them. Thank you for participating in that little activity. If you have a pen and paper handy and maybe want to jot down some new sounds you may have heard, some familiar sounds that you maybe thought about in a different way, feel free to do so. And if you maybe are like, I didn't hear anything, <laughs> that's okay too. This is just an experiment and a practice and it's something you can try anytime. To close out this class, I want you to reflect upon some of those sounds you may have noticed and the implications of those sounds because that's an important second step to an increased awareness of the sounds around you is what do they mean? So for example, as I record this from kind of late morning into the afternoon, I've noticed the sound of vehicles driving by my apartment has increased which makes sense because as the day goes on, the streets get a little busier. However, they're not quite as busy as they would be in sort of normal life outside of this pandemic realm that we've kind of adjusted to living in. So it's interesting to think about how just passing vehicles outside can serve as a cue to how our life has changed a bit. And at the same time, I noticed the birds outside going absolutely crazy <laughs> this morning. Um, the, it's a beautiful day. The sky is clear, which is pretty rare in Pittsburgh. So it's interesting to think about how in spite of it all, that summer is still on its way. The birds are still kind of in their spring fever and that nature is still growing. So that's an interesting dichotomy to consider there. And I encourage you to think about these concepts with sounds you may have heard. Lastly, before next class, I challenge you to think more actively about the sounds in your everyday life. So next time you're out for a walk or going to the grocery store or even just sitting out on your porch, I want you to hone in on a single sound that maybe happens in your everyday life but you never took full notice of and think about the implications of that sound. What does it tell you about your home, your community, your city, your environment? Maybe there isn't a direct answer and that's totally okay. Thank you so much for joining me today for Deep Listening, part one of Sound in the World Around Us. I really appreciate your time and curiosity and can't wait to see you again for part two environmental activism in music. See ya.